they're not using up that oxygen as quickly. Um, and these these cenomads are when they're underwater, they look like hunters on land. They go deep enough that they're not floating anymore, and so they're walking on the on the surface, of, you know, the the bottom of the ocean with their spear guns, and they they look like hunters. It's incredible to see. Amazing. So even if it's not 13 minutes, let's say it's half it's, that, it's still super impressive. It's very impressive, yeah. So do they grow up doing this? They do, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they, in fact, they spend so much time traditionally on these houseboats and so little time on land that a lot of the children actually learn to swim before they learn how to walk. Um, so uh, one of the divers, uh, when, I was, when I was out there, one of my colleagues noticed that one of the divers' feet was very soft. And we realize that it's because he's never really walking. He's just always in the water. So his feet don't develop the same kind of calluses that ours do um, because he's not using them like we do. Amazing. So how did you find this population and what sorts of questions did you start to ask? Yeah, so I was actually um, diving as part of a coral genomics project in Thailand, um, escaping Danish winter, because uh, mm -hmm. that's where I was doing my PhD. And I, I heard about a population called the Moken. Um, so that's another group of these sea nomads. And heard about you know their incredible underwater diving. Um, started looking into it and saw um, a study that I think you've seen that um, that showed that children, Moken children, could actually see underwater better than uh, European children. Um, and started thinking about you know, I mean, free diving is really dangerous. Um, and so I was thinking that this could actually be something that's driving selection in this population, that's causing this population to evolve. In other words, just to put this in um, everyday terms for people, if you don't get good at this, you die. Yeah, exactly. If you die young enough, you don't reproduce. Exactly. If you get good enough at this, uh, you can live long enough to reproduce and your children will presumably inherit whatever uh, mutation or, or genetic variants uh, afford this ability. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we see with competitive breath hold divers, um, you know, I, I've never actually been to one of these competitions, but I've read about them. People pass out underwater all the time um, and they're, you know, pulled to the surface and revived. But if you're a sea nomad diving in the middle of the ocean with no one nearby, nobody's going to pull you out of that water. And so you've just removed yourself from the gene pool completely. Whereas someone who maybe has a variation or has genetic variation that's making them safer at diving um, might survive that. And in this case, the safety at diving comes from being able to stay under longer. We can talk about that, but as long as we're on this point and because some people will be tempted to, uh, to go test their breath holding uh, time, which please don't do it. Um, just, I'm just gonna do it across the board. Just don't do 